Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we are going to learn how to create a dramatic and interesting effect known as the Dragon Effect in Photoshop. Now this effect was created by Polish photographer Andre Dragon and it's a popular image style used to add drama to portraits, most often in sports photography. Uh, this type of overly dramatized effect is also used in some movies like 300 and Spartacus. Now a couple of uh, important facts to get out of the way before we begin. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. If you're using a Mac, then when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit your option key. So with that out of the way, let's get started by opening up our images that we're going to use this effect on. And now that we have our image open that we want to uh, apply the dragon effect to, what we're going to do is make it a little bit easier for us to use this effect later on by creating an action that will automize most of what we want to do. So we're going to open up our actions palette. Now, if you don't see your actions palette, you don't know where it is, just go up here to window, click on actions, and actions palette will pop up. You can also hit alt F9 on the keyboard to bring up your actions palette. Once you have your actions palette up, we are going to create a new action. So go here to create new action. And what we're going to do is we're going to name this dragon. It's D-R-A-G-A-N effect. Uh, so that's what we'll name it, dragon effect. Uh, we'll put it into whatever set that you want or no set. Doesn't matter. Function key, none, color. You can give it a color if you want. Uh, and then you hit start recording. Once you have started recording, everything that we do from this point forward will be remembered by Photoshop, saved as this action, and then when you open up a future uh, image that you want to apply this effect to, you can just go to your actions palette, select the dragon effect, hit play, and it will do most of the work for you, which makes your life and everyone else's a lot easier. So for right now, I'm going to hide the actions palette. I don't need to have it on screen, but it's still recording. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to duplicate the original layer here, our background layer, by hitting Control J on the keyboard. We are then going to rename this new layer as Details because that's what we're going to do with this layer. It's going to be the details for our image. Uh, then what we need to do is go to Filter, Other, High Pass, and in high pass, what you want to do is you're trying to bring out all the details. See, if I click here and drag down, it, it hides uh, the preview of what we're doing. So you can see that it's uh, got color and there aren't that many details. You don't really see his pores or the hair on his uh, mustache and beard very well. But as soon as I let go, you get a lot more detail in there and you get to see a lot more of the pores, of the, of the hairs, of the wrinkles on his eyes and face. So you want to use a radius between 5 and, say, 15. The size of your image, uh, the resolution of your image is going to dictate how much of the high-pass filter you need to use. For this particular image, I think 6 is good enough. You don't want to go overboard with it because then it, uh, it doesn't allow you to tinker with the actual amount once it's applied. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we duplicate the image and apply uh, the... Th these details yet again. So uh, for right now, let's keep it pretty low. I'm going to stick with six pixels. You can go with five. Sometimes you might need only four, but somewhere, uh, try and keep the look somewhere like what you see here, where most of the color is gone, but all the lines and details are showing. Once you have what you want, hit OK. And then we're going to change this layer mode to overlay. You can see already that we have uh, a much more dramatic look. Now to add a little bit more detail and drama, we are going to duplicate this details layer again by hitting Control J on our keyboard. And then we're going to change the opacity of this layer to only 60%. And that gives us a lot more detail, but it doesn't overpower the image. So once we have uh, those two, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, add five adjustment layers on top of this. 
Now, uh, the first adjustment layer that we are going to use is going to be a levels adjustment layer. So go down to the bottom of your layers palette, click on the adjustment layer icon, and let's go up to levels. And we are going to bring up our levels adjustments. Now, under preset, we're going to go to increase contrast three. And that will it greatly increase the sense of drama for this image. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is go back to our uh, uh, adjustment levels and we're going to add in a hue saturation adjustment layer and what we are going to do is use the preset of old style that will desaturate it and give it just a little bit more interest without overpowering it with uh, those odd colors that we just saw. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a curves adjustment layer. So do that and then go to preset and we're going to go with darker. Okay, that uh, darkens everything a little bit and adds just a little bit more drama. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go to our uh, black and white adjustment layer and we are going to change it from default to preset of lighter. Okay, that will make it uh, look a little bit lighter and a little bit more dramatic, but it's missing the color. Now, if you like it without the color, that's fine, but for the purposes of this tutorial and to get the dragon effect, all we need to do is change this, this layer's opacity down to 60%, like so. And we now have more color in here, but it's not quite as uh, uh, dramatic as it was before. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a color lookup adjustment layer. This is our last adjustment layer. So we're going to bring up our adjustment layers, go down to color lookup, and then under 3D LUT file, which is the one that we want checked, we are going to scroll down and find crisp warm. That's what we want, and there you go. You've now got a crisp, warm look to this, but it's a little bit too overpowering. So again, we are going to change this uh, adjustments layer opacity down to 60%. And we now have a much more dramatic, slightly more realistic look to this image. Now the last thing that we need to do for our action is we're going to create a new layer. So what we are going to do is hit Control Shift N on our keyboard to bring up our new layer dialog box. And we're going to name this new layer as Dodge and Burn. Uh, we're going to make sure that use previous layer to create clipping mask is unchecked. Color should be none. Mode should be overlay. Once you do overlay, this bottom checkbox becomes usable and you want to check it so that it will fill the overlay neutral color of 50% gray. We then want opacity of 100. We hit OK. And we now have our dodge and burn layer at the top of our layer stack. Once we're done with this, what we want to do is go back to our actions palette and we want it to stop recording. And we now have everything that we need to make our dragon effect. The one thing that we want to do uh, is go down here in our dragon effect and we want to make sure that uh, the high pass filter line right here, we want to click right here next to the high pass filter uh, effect so that once that comes up, we can change the amount. If you don't check on this dialog checkbox right here, then it will just use the same preset that you used before, which is going to be the amount of six for your image. And some images need more and some Im images need less. So make sure that you click on this dialog box checkbox next to the high pass filter so that when it reaches that, it will stop and wait for your input before continuing with the rest of the action. So now we've got this all done and uh, let's just see how this actually works. What we will do is go back to our history state. We will click on the old man at the very beginning uh, and we have now lost everything that we just did. So we will select our dragon effect. We will hit play and see how it stops at the high pass filter. That's why we clicked on the dialogue uh, checkbox. We aren't going to change anything here, but if we wanted to, we could. Then we hit OK and it applies everything else. And we now have our dragon effect mostly finished and we don't have to do much work at all. Now, the dodge and burn layer is there so that we can lighten certain areas of our image, like the eyes and places that are in deep shadow. 
and we can darken certain parts of the images like his beard, which is very bright. So what we are going to do is go to our dodge and burn tool. You can click on it here in the toolbar or you can hit O on the keyboard to bring it up. And what we want to do is make sure that we are using a soft round brush. The size should be small enough to use in the area that you want to use. Uh, range should be mid tones. Exposure should be 50% and uh, protect tones should be checked. Then what we want to do is you're going to use the um, dodge tool to, um, uh, to uh, dodge the dark areas that will make them lighter. And you're going to use the burn tool to burn or make darker the light areas. So let's go over here and I'll show you the difference. The dodge tool looks like uh, kind of a magnifying glass. Uh, and that is going to brighten things and the burn tool kind of looks like somebody making an okay sign and that is going to darken light areas. So let's use the uh, burn tool right now and we are going to uh, lightly brush on his beard to darken this area. As long as we are on the dodge and burn uh, layer, we can dodge and burn without destroying the image itself, which is what we want to do. We want to protect the original image and only affect the uh, layers that we have created. So here you can see that the, uh, the beard and mustache are getting a little bit darker because I'm, I'm uh, painting onto them with the dodge, with the burn tool. So now what I want to do is I want to lighten up his eyes. So let's make the, um, the uh, size of our brush a little bit smaller, maybe somewhere around 70 pixels. Uh, no, let's go even smaller. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard to make the brush smaller now. Uh, and then we want to switch to the uh, dodge tool and we can now do his eyes to make them a little bit brighter. Now it's a subtle difference. Uh, to make his eyes slightly brighter, but it does make a difference. Here, if I turn off the dodge and burn layer, there it is off, here it is on. You can see that there is a difference, although it is subtle, and we want it to be subtle. We don't want to overpower the image. Now, this area here uh, by his eye is very dark, so I'm going to lighten that by just using my uh, dodge tool to lighten around his eyes slightly. And then on his face, the tip of his nose and his cheeks are a little bit too bright for my taste. So I'm going to go switch back now to the burn tool to make them a little bit darker. And I am going to then paint on his face like so. Uh, and on his nose like that. And on the uh, right side of the image of his face like that. And his face now no longer looks like uh, it's too bright for the image. And that right there is how you create the dragon effect in Photoshop. Now, I do want to show you how you can, uh, how you can use this effect with images that are, say, a little bit darker than our starting image was. If you recall, our starting image was very bright and cheery already. Uh, and once we applied our effect, it got a lot darker. Now, if you're starting with a dark image already, let's say something like this, let's make it a little bit bigger here, something like this, where the face is very dark, you can still apply your action uh, like so. Uh, and for this one, I'm going to use less of a, uh, a high pass filter. So I'm going to just use a four for the high pass filter. And there you go. Now, when you look at this, this looks horrible. It's way too dark. Now, the way to fix this very simply and easily is go down here to your curves adjustment layer, click on that, double click on the layer so that it brings up the curves adjustment. And instead of using the preset of darker, use the preset of lighter. And just like that, we have our effect working the way that we want it to work. And then you can, again, with your dodge and burn, you can lighten up certain areas and darken certain areas, depending on what you're trying to do. So, uh, for example, I want to use the dodge tool right now to make uh, the dark areas a little bit, bit brighter. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to be on my dodge and burn. I'm going to make a, a slightly bigger uh, 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 brush. And then I'm going to paint right here on his nose. I'm going to paint under his eye like this. And then I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush to paint his eye quite a bit 
to bring out how bright his eyes should be. And there you go. Now you've got an image that looks far, far more uh, like a dragon effect image. And you've got some up here. And there you go. Simple, quick, and easy to get this effect using Photoshop, a whole bunch of adjustment layers, and an action to speed up the process. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe. I create new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.